Hi, I'm Emma, and today we are going to be talking about task one of the writing module for the IELTS. So again, this is task one for the writing module of the IELTS. So a lot of you may not know what happens in the writing section of the IELTS. So uh, it's in two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be something about maybe a graph, um, a diagram, some, something to do with having to write a report to describe what you see visually. The second part is an essay. So we're going to be talking about the first part today. Okay, so the first thing to know is that you're going to have about 20 minutes to do task one. Um, so this is not a lot of time and it's going to be very important for you to practice this before you actually go into the IELTS. Um, for task one, you have to write about 150 words describing either a graph, a chart, a table, a diagram, or a, a flow chart. Um, you will be marked on four different things in this task. So th this is something to keep in mind. You're going to be marked on your usage of vocabulary, if you use vocabulary correctly, and if you use a lot of different vocabulary. You're going to be marked on grammar, you're going to be marked on your ability to do what they ask. So for example, you need to write 150 words for this task. If you write 120 words for this task, then you didn't really meet the task requirements. And finally, um, you're going to be marked on coherence. So do, do you have in your answer an introduction and a conclusion? Do you use words like um, first of all, secondly, in conclusion. So again, there, there are four different things you're going to be marked on. Vocabulary, grammar, coherence, and your ability to do what is asked of you. So your ability to meet the task requirements. Okay, so let's get started. So this specific lesson is going to focus a lot on vocabulary. What sorts of words can you use in this task that will help you to get the, uh, the top mark you can. All right, so let's get started. So like I said before, um, in this task, you're going to have to describe what you see. This may be a bar chart or a bar graph. So this is what is known as a bar graph. You might have to describe something like that. You may have to describe a line graph. See the line? This one is a line graph. This one that looks like a pizza, this is called a pie chart. So another thing that you might see on task one is a pie chart. So we have a bar graph, line graph, pie chart. Sometimes you may see two of these. You may have to describe a pie chart and a line graph, or a bar graph and a pie chart. You may also have to, um, if, if you don't get one of these, you may get what is called a flow chart. So a flow chart, shows how something is organized. So usually it shows different steps. So this might be step one, this might be step two, step three. So it's a way to show a process and to organize information. So you might get something like this, which is a flow chart, or you may get a table. So this is just an example of a table. Um, and depending on which one you get, you're going to be using a different type of vocabulary. So there's specific words to use when you're talking about a bar graph. There are different words to use with flow charts, with tables. Um, today we're really going to focus on bar graphs and line graphs. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so now what we are going to do is talk about how to write your introduction and vocabulary you can use in your introduction for this part of the IELTS. So 
When you present a graph, uh, like I said before, you should have an introduction, the body of what you're going to say, and a conclusion. This is going to affect your coherence marks. So you want to have an introduction, body, and conclusion. It's very important. So a lot of students, when they first see um, IELTS Task 1, uh, in the academic version of the IELTS, um, they get really nervous. They don't know how to start off what they're going to say. How do you start off describing a graph? So what I'm going to talk about now is an easy introductory sentence you can use in order to explain your graph. So I have this sentence, this line graph, so here's an example again of a line graph, shows the changes in sales between 1990 and 1996. So this is just an example. Now if I got a bar graph, just change this word, this bar graph. I could also say this pie chart. This table. This flow chart. So whatever um, image you get, you can use this plus the type of chart it is or the type of figure it is, if it's a table, if it's a flow chart, if it's a diagram. So this diagram, this pie chart, this bar graph. This is almost like a mathematical formula. Just imagine this plus this plus this plus this equals your introduction, your first sentence in your introduction. So this bar graph, and now we have a verb. So shows is good. What else could you use? Well, you could use represents. This pie chart represents. You could use this pie chart demonstrates. Um, this bar graph illustrates. If you're doing a table, you could say this table lists, so like list. So what you want is you want a verb similar to these. Shows, demonstrates, represents, um, illustrates. These are all really good verbs to use for your introduction, for the first sentence of your introduction. So this bar graph demonstrates. Here we have a specific example the changes in sales. Oftentimes you'll be looking at changes in sales. So for example here in this graph, we have on, this is known as the x-axis. So x-axis. This is just some more terminology about graphs. So on our x-axis we see years. 1990, 1994, 1996. So we're talking about time. You may not see something like this, but there's a good chance you might get a graph that shows time on your x-axis. Um, this is known as the y-axis. So y, oops. And in this example, on the y-axis is sales in millions of dollars. So you have 300 million, 200 million, 100 million. Um, you may get something completely different than this. This is just an example. So in here, so this, and again this is a line graph, demonstrates the changes in sales. So if you get um, a different type of graph, in this section you just write what it is. So you write the topic you're talking about. This pie graph demonstrates um, the differences between men and women in terms of uh, further education. Just an example. So whatever your topic is, um, or incidence of disease in some land. That's another example. Um, so it might be an incidence, prevalence. So whatever your topic is, you write here. So this graph demonstrates blank, and in the last section, you should write um, sort of the date. 
whatever they're showing. So if you're looking at years, which is a good chance you will be, um, here you would you could say between 1990 and 1996. If this was different, maybe if we were looking at 2000 to 2010, you could say this bar graph demonstrates incidence of whatever over a 10-year period. So again, you can have between this date and this date from have a year from 1990 to... So these are just different ways to show time which will be located on the axis, sorry. Um, okay, so again, what you want to include in your introduction is first, the type of graph it is. Is it a pie chart, a bar graph? You want a verb, such as demonstrates shows. You want to say what the topic you're looking at is. And you want to talk about the dates. Uh, what are you looking at exactly, 2000 to 2010? Um, so the, the, this is how you should start off your introductory sentence. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about what your first sentence for this task can be. There, there are other ways to do it, but the way I showed you is a great formula that's easy to remember and that will really help you with vocabulary marks and coherence. So right now what we're going to focus on is some key terms, key vocabulary, you can use when describing movement of a graph or a, a line, a bar graph or a line, line graph. Okay, so let's get started. So usually when we look at graphs, there are three different patterns we might see, uh, three different trends. We may see an upward trend where it goes up. We may see a downward uh, trend, or we may see it remaining stable. So you may see multiple uh, trends on a, a graph. So for example, a graph might have an upward tr trend, reach a peak, and then downward trend. Or maybe it's a downward trend first, it goes up a bit, and then it becomes stable. So how do we talk about describing movement? What are some keywords we can use? So when we're talking about uh, upward trend, some of the words we can use, uh, I'll, I'll talk about verbs first. We can use increase, so, so we could call this an increase. We can say it went up. We can say it climbed. It jumped. It rose. So notice when we're talking about um, describing movement on the IELTS, the verbs we use, these are all verbs, what tense are they in? If you said simple past, you're correct. You want to be using the simple past when you're describing movement for IELTS task one. So we can say, um, if this was talking about sales, for example, so we looked at that example before, sales, and this is years, so we have maybe 2000 to 2010. We could say sales rose, sales increased, sales went up, sales climbed, sales jumped. And then we would usually say between 2000 and 2010. So this is talking about the, the verbs, um, but we can also turn this into nouns. So rise, the noun form of, of, sorry, rose is arise. So for example, there was a rise in 2000. We could say there was a an increase. So 
So this is one way to do it. Um, so if we have the noun here, if we decided to use it in a verbal form, we could say sales rose between 2000 and 2010. Okay. So we've looked at when it goes up, when trends go upward. What about downward trends? What are some of the words we use with that? So we'll start off with verbs. We can talk about a decline. Sales declined. You can say decreased. And again, simple past. We can say went down. We could say dropped. We could say plummeted if it's a very steep drop. Okay, so we can say sales plummeted and we can also say, so we have declined, decreased, went down, dropped, plummeted, finally slumped. So these are all ways to say it went, notice the arrow, down. Um, so again, these are all verbs, so we could write it here. Sales decreased between 2000 and 2010. Sales went down between 2000 and 2010. If we decide to use a noun, decline, we can say a decline. We can say a decrease, a drop, a slump. So many of these also have a noun form. So there was a a decline, say a decrease, a slump. And so when it's important to note that, so here is when we're using the noun, here is when we're using the verb. When we use the noun, remember it's there was a decrease, a rise, whatever, in here we can actually write the topic in sales or whatever your topic is between, and then we have the date. Or if we use the verbal form, you have the topic, sales, verb, and the date again. Okay. So finally, the third trend is when nothing happens. We can say it remains steady. You can also say it remains stable. No. Remains stable, it remains steady. We can also call this a plateau. Plateau. Okay. So there was, um, or sorry, sales remained steady between 2000 and 2010. Sales uh, remained stable. There was a plateau in sales between 2000 and 2010. Okay, so again, when you do this part of the task, you don't want to reuse the same words again and again and again. 
if for the whole time you're describing the movement, you use went up multiple times, the, the sales went up, and then they went down, and then they went up again, and then they went down again, it, the examiner is going to give you low marks on your usage of vocabulary. They want to see variety. So try to memorize, you don't have to memorize all of these. Choose a couple. Maybe use increased. Maybe use rose. Decreased, dropped. Remain steady. Uh, one thing I wanted to say as well with um, plummeted, I think I said this before, but it's a really steep drop. So if the decline is like this, that's not plummeting. Plummeting is a very steep drop. Now, another thing we can do is we can add adverbs and adjectives to our, our nouns and our verbs in order to explain the degree of change. So we just described movement. Well, what else can we add here? So, let's raise this. So we can add words like significant. There was a significant increase, meaning an important increase. Uh, it, it's a, a quite a big increase. We could say there was a um, a steady increase. We could say there was a dramatic. So for example, if we had to draw these, a dramatic increase would be a very sudden increase. That's another word, sudden. We could say a steady increase, which is not so dramatic. We could say a significant, which is more than steady, less than dramatic. So maybe something like this. So significant, steady, sudden, dramatic, these are all adjectives. So where would I put it here? There was a So we use the word increase, which can be a noun. There was a sudden increase. There was a dramatic increase. There was a significant increase. We could also use these with the words decrease. There was a sudden decrease. There was a steady decline. There was a dramatic drop. Um, although that one, a drop usually is dramatic, so it, it's better to use it with decline, decrease. So increase. So something like this will help your mark if you're using both adjectives to describe what type of increase along with nouns. Um, similarly, we can turn all of these into adverbs. Significant is an adjective. If we want to describe it as a verb, we can say sig significantly. Steadily. Dramatically. Suddenly. Sales. We're talking about an increase. Sales. Increased. Or went up. Um, any of those verbs we learned earlier increased dramatically. Between 2000 and 2010. Sales increased steadily. Sales increased significantly. Uh, sales increased rapidly. These are all different words we can use to help us in terms of our IELTS score. So again, this lesson has focused mainly on vocabulary. So we haven't really talked so much about um, how to get good coherence marks, meaning your organization. So uh, that will come at a later lesson where we'll talk about how to write a proper introduction, body, and conclusion. For now, this is focusing on vocabulary and how to get your vocabulary marks um, the highest you can get them. So again, the main thing to remember is you want your vocabulary to be varied, meaning you don't want to use the same word again and again, you want to have an introduction, a body, a conclusion. And also, um, you want to, to have variety. So 
um, there was a sudden increase. You want to use nouns sometimes. Maybe you want to also show you can use these words in the verb form. Again, when you do use it in the verb form, remember, simple, simple past. So for more information on this, I highly recommend visiting us at www.ingvid.com. Um, another great resource, um, if you're planning on doing the IELTS, is goodluckielts.com. It's an excellent website that will give you more information on the different types of tasks you will be required to do. So until next time, take care.